everyone. This is Anna with Passions of Paper. I am here to show off a new journal that I have made. Um, I'm trying something new this time around. I had this um, idea for this journal for myself. Um, I'm coming up to needing a new journal to write in. My uh, what I like to call the single signature journals, the ones that I made and put in my Etsy shop. Uh, it's almost done. It's almost completely filled up. So it's time for me to move on to a new journal. And um, I like, I'm a bit crazy with what I like in my journals. I'm a big writer and I like big tassels and big journals. And um, my uh, starfish journal got a lot of love. So I decided that when making this for myself, I would go ahead and make another one to sell. So, um, for the most part, they're almost, almost not quite identical because the pages were different. I had a supply of pages and some went in here and some went in here. Um, but the covers themselves are the same. Um, and then the, the tassels are almost the same except that like, let me show you this. The tassel for my journal is very, very long. And very very big um, I don't know if people like that though so I didn't make it quite so big for the sale journal so I just wanted to show off what the differences the main differences were and I'll go ahead and set that aside mine has not been decorated yet it's just a bunch of pages um, I made this one completely first and now I'm gonna go through and do mine next so as you can see, the tassel is a little smaller, um, not so overwhelming. It's still big. Uh, it's it's in my style of big tassels. This is probably about the same size as my Starfish journal. The uh, my vintage nature journal over there uh, officially has the biggest tassel I've ever made. Um, so those are the biggest differences and. Let's go back in and start going through this. So here we have the cover. Let me get that scrap paper out of the way. Um, I use this fur trim to as the closure and it just wraps around. It is attached with an eyelet right here on the back. And so this book, it's it's a fabric cover made with my corrugated cardboard that I like to use for covers. Um, so it's it's squishy and you can bend it and play around with it and it won't hurt it at all. Oops. Um, and then I did basically fabric on the inside and the outside of the cover and um, I've got my typical removable tassel here. You just pinch the bulldog clip and it comes off. I did something a little different this time. I left um, a gap in the cardboard between the fabric on the inside and the outside so that you can put this in. Let's see if I can do this on camera. So I just attach it to there. And then um, it kind of just hides the bulldog clip a little bit with the phrase coming up. Hopefully you guys were able to see that. Uh, it was hard doing that and paying attention to the camera at the same time. Um, so as you can see here, I've got five signatures. And I made some dangles out of paper beads and glass beads. <clears throat> they came out beautifully. I really love them. Beautiful, beautiful beads. I love these beads. They're just so pretty. Um, so this, like I said, this is a vintage nature journal. And when I say vintage, I mean like real vintage. Not all of it, but I, it's very, very heavy in the vintage elements. Um, this can be shortened down. I do a lot because basically if you want, you can cut some off and use it to play with in your journal. Or it can, and obviously it can expand as the journal expands. 
as you can see that just popped right open I decorated a lot in this journal um, also it is 444 pages front and back so it is a lot of paper uh, this is made for writers like me who also like some decoration so um, this is nine and a half, let me see my paper, it's nine and a half inches tall by six and a half inches wide, that's not including what sticks out or the tassel. And then it has a three inch spine and a five and a half inch gator mouth when it's just sitting down, so like that. But when it's standing up, it definitely, it wants to open up if it's not bound. You see that? I was just, look at all that amazingness popping out of there. Um, speaking of popping out, that was popping out. Okay. So, let's get on it at the inside. Oh, well, actually, I should guess I should talk about the cover here. We've got this uh, Tim Holtz picture here of the moths. Sorry for the glare. I did um, some eyelash trim here. I just really love how that's like all messy all over the picture and it's kind of like it's just in the forest and that's really what I wanted this to feel like I just really want it to be real, um, realistic forest colors um, so I did browns and tans and then this dark forest green is the main thing but I do have some of this lighter green all throughout too like you can see in the beads here. Uh, there is a lot going on in this tassel and it's kind of hard to see all of it without really just playing through it. Um, and speaking of the tassel, this thing feels amazing. It is so incredibly soft. So, whoever gets this journal is definitely going to have fun playing with that. The reason why I make tassels like this is because um, to me, the, or at least these journals that I've been making lately, um, it's kind of like their hair. So, um, I like these journals to have just long flowing, fun to play with hair. So, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, Alright, so, um, as you can see I did fray the edges on this fabric and I did... Uh, just lots of different materials on the cover and it wraps all the way around and then I did the exposed spine so you can see that there are five signatures in there alright now to the inside and when I'm getting into the journal a tip is just to put this up if you don't feel like taking it on and off all the time just stick it up and it's out of your way so here we've got this pocket which um, I have had to reinforce with this ribbon here. It's a really thick ribbon because I didn't realize how fragile this material is. So whoever does buy this journal, just please note that not just basically don't pull too hard on this because the material does fray and it can come apart at this right here. So there's like no way to attach this how so that it doesn't permanently doesn't fray at all because it'll fray anywhere if it's pulled too hard. But there's still plenty of room to get in there and get stuff out. So in this pocket we've got some goodies and this big brown envelope here. We have some vintage pages. Lots of different textures and um, ages and colors with oh man I smell really good too um, so just some stuff to play with I like basically try to load this up with vintage items that you can play with as you journal through this book we've got this little vintage this is not vintage the envelope itself but this envelope here is vintage I bought a lot of vintage stuff off Etsy to make this journal so um, I got quite a collection now and these are all just vintage items just little goodies to play with throughout the journal
I did this little leaf wax seal in here. It's not attached, so you won't be ripping the uh, vintage envelope. And uh, just to make it look official. And then I made this envelope here out of a vintage book page uh, from a nature book. And um, I thought that this gear kind of looked like a sun. So I put that on there like it was the sun over the forest. And this little birdie here is flying around. So we just take that off and open it up. There's another full size image on the inside. And here's some more vintage goodies. Um, as well as a pocket that I ended up not using that's just ready to be glued down. I've got a vintage playing card. And this um, scene here that's through the woods and looking at a building really far away. Uh, it says view of Ohan. I'm not sure. And then, then these are two vintage postcards. They are pretty old, um, anywhere between, I think, like 80 to 100 years old. I think a lot of these were, were postage stamped, like, 1918 um, from the collection that I bought. Um, so these were not written in those, so they weren't postage stamped. So I don't know the official date, but they're probably around there. They, it, the, they range from about 1908 to 1935, so... They're in that age range. And they're just beautiful nature scenes. So they fit in my vintage nature themed journal. Now this thing, guys, this is a big girl. She was so much fun to decorate. Part of uh, what is fun about this book is not just the decorating, um, but it's the, the uh, pages and the images on the pages. It's just so beautiful. I... Even though I made one for myself, I still want to keep this one also because, like I said, each book has different pages and they're all so beautiful. And then, of course, I'm sure my book will end up getting decorated very differently, so I wish I could just keep both of them. But I don't need two identical journals, <laughs> so or at least identical on the cover, you know. So here we've got a butterfly charm, very beautiful and big. I did stamping here. I got, um, so I used digitals, and those are on several different types of paperweights of paper, um, different types of paper, some cardstock, some copy paper, all different kinds of things. I have coffee dyed papers and food color papers in here of all different types and sizes and varieties. Um, and then I've got these vintage pages, so you'll want to be careful with these. They can take some abuse. I did not put the stuff that would just crumble when you touch it in the journal because that I feel like it would probably just be destroyed by the time somebody received this. So these are uh, more durable vintage pages, but still very beautiful. And here we've got this mulberry paper with some samples sewn onto it. They look like they were taken straight from nature. Yeah, it's, it's just great. They're all different textures, so it's just a great thing to just go through and touch. But uh, if you use a writing board, you you probably be able to write on these as well. Maybe not this one, but these other ones you could write as long as you're not using like a super sharp pen. And then just put the writing board under each paper. And this does come with a writing board. Um, duh, because she's huge and she needs a writing board. So I, I personally always journal with a writing board. Um, so yes, I made one for this journal too. Um, so we've got a mushroom stamp there, and I did some leaf stamping as a border here. And here we've got a library card that I stamped on. Or no, I stenciled some leaves, and then did a stamp there. This is a vintage ledger page that was too long, so it had to be folded. Very beautiful handwriting on it. Wish I could write that pretty. And we've got a stencil here and there. And this is some vintage dictionary, a vintage dictionary page. And uh, we've got some vintage mushroom illustrations here. This is, um, 
This is a scrapbook page, but I don't remember which one it was, which book it was from. And then here I just, this is a uh, picture from a vintage nature uh, my, uh, book. And then I just, I've got these cute little cards in that pocket. When something has a white back, that's a dead giveaway that it's not vintage. Just so you know, if you're wondering what's vintage and what's not. I don't um, bother covering the backs of my journaling cards because I just write on them. Um, and I did these little tabs, one for each signature. So if you look here, you can see some of the tabs poking out. I tried to make them all visible, but that was before I decorated the book. So one of them might have gotten hidden. And here's just these vintage pages are just so beautiful. They each have their own texture and color, and they're just all different. They feel different. Some are really, um, this isn't vintage, but like this is really soft, and some are coarser. Um, I did some stenciling on here. Oh, and this also has uh, some, oh, not food coloring. I did not do food coloring. I did um, Tim Holtz reinker. I have the green, um, what green is that? I forget what the green is, but I did a green and a brown and played around. We've got a little picture here and a mushroom stamp. That's a vintage book page from a plant book. This is just some washi tape, or no, that's a sticker, but it's like washi tape. Pretty principles. This is a, from a vintage page. You'll see the other side soon. That's where the writing is, the typing. Did some stamping on that. Choose kindness and laugh often. And this, this is the center of the signature. And it was so beautiful, I didn't want to cover it up. So I did a clear pocket. And we've got this um, postcard that is not vintage, but it's still a usable postcard. And just a little something here to play with. You can tear these off and use them individually to decorate and write on this piece. So here's the other side of that page. You can see the typing on that. I think I used um, 13 sellers from Etsy. They're digitals, but some of them I use multiple t uh, sets, multiple kits from them. Uh, so there are a lot, there's just a very big variety of digitals in this book because the, I just love the imagery. Here I made a little notebook and I made this faux leather cover. It's pretty fun. And it's got these beautiful green beads hanging off of it. And then in the in the pages here we've got some digitals and coffee dyed paper. And this is a little something I got on Sheen. This is fun to just leave out and record thoughts that pop into your head randomly and you don't have anything nearby, maybe leave it on your nightstand so that when you're trying to go to sleep at night and something pops in your head, jot it down real fast. And here we've got a pocket with a postcard. These vintage pages. This is the other side of the signature, so for the most part, you You've seen this stuff. Here's the second signature. I love that page. It's just gorgeous. I used a picture from a vintage book, and we've got this tag. Um, this is um, watercolor papers or something like that. You know, those art pads. So there are papers in here that you can do watercolors on. Here we've got a belly band. I did some splashes of green that turned out beautiful. 
and we've got a vintage piece of page piece of paper here that can be written on and just a journal card there did um, some sewing here with this fabric that's the same as the pocket turned it into ribbon this is really thick handmade paper that I got on Amazon and it's got the natural deckled edge I used some washi tapes throughout there's a journaling, journaling card and just a nature page from that I bought from Sheen This beautiful dragonfly pocket from Louise, Louisa Heinzel. Fun vintage page. Did another one of these up here. This page came out from the coffee dyeing like this, all crumpled. So I just left that because I thought that added a lot of fun character. There's some stickers here. washi tape edge vintage page we've got some tags here I did this beautiful stamp here and it opens up to this gorgeous picture from a vintage book and some fun stickers here another sticker I did some uh, script stamping, postage stamp, and then on the other side of the signature. Um, I made a specimen card here. That was fun. And then in here we've just got a journaling card. You can always, you can pretty much always tell what the vintage pages are because I uh, used washi tapes on them to hold them together so they could be upright because they're always so small for the most part, with the exception of those ledger pages. So I did some mushroom uh, washi tape here that's like stamps, post stamps strips. And it says flying by just to say hi. And then here we've just got some goodies that can be used. Oh, and um, on here I've also got um, this little bottle of some dried flowers. That I um, I use some sewing machine thread and hand stitch this in. It came out really pretty. This says lost and found on a rusty bulb pin. And we've got some a vintage uh, Spanish book page here. And this vintage um, library card, I think. Like the, uh, oh, what do you call it? Where they find what they had before they had computers. Um, this is just a journal card. And then this vintage page here. Here we've got just a piece of scrap paper you can write on and that's a newspaper clipping that's very very old. Actually does that have the date on it? No, I do not see a date. Got a sticker there. Beautiful vintage plant book pages. Cherish each day. And we've got some um, tuck spots. I made this little tag here. I love these little stickers. You can feel you can feel them. They've got these uh, 
I don't know what that is, but you can feel it. It says, let us imagine for a moment. And then I have a little stamp on the back. And then here we've just got a receipt and some playful things. Put a little trim here in the, with the eyelash trim. And here, this page actually accidentally got sewn onto this page. So instead of ripping it off, I just left it there because I thought that was a really fun tuck spot. That's, it was actually kind of cool the way it turned out, just sewed right here. And so I've got this page in there. And it can fit a lot of stuff in there. Alright, third signature. We've got postcard here. And another specimen card. Lots of writing space. Here we've got a pocket with this beautiful card. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. John Keats. And these can easily fit more things as well if you are a big fan of storing ephemera. I am. I store a lot of stuff from my day-to-day -day events. It really bulks up a journal. But it's fun. Got another one of those stickers here, which you can feel. Uh, just a picture here. I just I kind of made this pocket and didn't put anything in it, so I made that. And we just got this little jute bow. Here we have um, another postcard. They're just so pretty. I know there's a lot of them in here, but they're they're nature, and they look like vintage, and they're just a lot of fun to use. And great journaling cards, easy to write on the backs of, or you can use them for real. Um, so this is the dead center of the whole book. And I did two pictures for coloring, and you can use the um, writing board to help you with that. So that was a lot of fun. I did that in this journal and in my journal. Very old page there. This is a dictionary page. Um, I circled the word nature. Here I've got a rusty paper clip with some vintage items. Got this playing card and um, another vintage picture beautiful nature scene there and this John Deere um, catalog page I wish I had the whole book it looks like it was full of fun things to look at and here's another one of those cards you were born with wings, Rumi. Here we've got a fun pocket. This little pocket right here has a little specimen thing you can just glue onto something. And then this cute little mushroom stamp that's a sticker. And in here we have this beautiful vintage postcard of this landscape. Um, 
I don't know if I'm seeing this right, but it kind of looks like this part here juts out. Like, that's the cliff hanging out over water. That's pretty crazy. I would not stand on the edge of that. And just a little something you can play with. We've got a cellar gardening book page here. Fruit. Vintage page. Um, I did some hand stitching or slow stitching here. And I got a little, this little button here. And this says, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. And on this side, we've got this paper bag pocket. I turn it into a double pocket. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> I have um, this, these are stickers, this little label sticker and vintage, um, well, that's not vintage, but butterfly wings. Um, this stuff's vintage. We've got this little Monopoly card parcel post um, thing like that would probably still actually stick to something if you got it wet and then this old um, quacha two quacha bill and then in here be careful with this stuff this is a little more fragile um, stuff that did not make the cut for pages. So we've got this music sheet, a catalog, a Robux and Sears catalog page, a recipe page, and I don't know if this is like what checks used to look like back in the day, but there's that, and it's really cool looking. That just slips in here. And then we've got this um, book page from a plant book. Basically like all these plants and like what they do. Um, so the dots were just, they just looked a lot of fun. So I used that page. Greg Shorthand. I'd love to get a book from him and have all those pages. Here we've got a butterfly charm hanging on this Tim Holtz mini um, pen, safety pen. Love this leaf trim. And here we have the writing board. So I made this pocket here. It's just got a to-do list page and a guest check. And then here's the writing board. Beautiful paper covering the front and the back to change it up. I keep it very simple and flat so that when it's behind your paper, it's not bulking it up. I use a pretty thin cardboard because otherwise a thicker cardboard would make this part right here bump real bad and then you can't get it in as close it sticks further out and then if you accidentally write over here you're poking your pen through the paper and making holes so um, that is the way that I make my writing boards I've never actually seen anyone else's writing boards so I don't know how they're made but this is the design I came up with based off of how I use my journal and this is exactly what I use for myself. Um, here, I made a little pocket here for this. Um, this was just this little piece of metal. Um, it was supposed to, it's a, it was sticky on this side, and it's supposed to be like a magnetic thingy. Um, that my little sewing machine light is supposed to magnetize to it, but the sticky part wasn't staying on my sewing machine, so I figured I would just turn it into a journal embellishment. So that's in there. Some fun moth stickers to go with the moth picture on the cover. 
And this page here, this is just so beautiful. This is from a book all about dried flowers. And I had to make this the center page because this is just gorgeous. Honestly, I wish I could make both of them, both sides the center page, but you can only do one. <clears throat> Another one of those little butterfly stickers. And here we've got an envelope. I did um, another wax seal on it. And again, I did not actually have it stick down so that this can be open without tearing it. Cute little mushroom in the wax seal. And we've got some careful pulling this stuff out. It's pretty fragile. We've got this um, vintage photo of this baby. And we've got this... Um, Table of Time for Seating page. Extremely vintage. This is one of those ones you want to be really careful with. And then this was a book page of just some pictures. Um, and then some more recipes. So the other one was the recipes, recipes for meats and this one's recipes for fudge. So between the two of those you could have a nice dinner with a delicious dessert. Another one of those little butterflies. On this page I just folded it in half. Nothing special, just some good secret writing space there. Technically you could do that to any page you want. Um, I use my um, butterfly um, hole punches and on some sticker paper and made a bunch of butterflies on there flying around. And here we've got a jelly print pocket with just some journaling, a journaling tag and card. Pretty stuff. And this was fun. Um, I did more of that faux leather here and made it like it's a nature study little handbook that somebody just carries around in their back pocket and records stuff as it happens in the moment and we've got I put tabs on here entry rec, uh, record or record and notes And so that's attached to that page there. I just started using this um, material that I have and started playing with it and came up with my own way to make faux leather because I didn't really like, I didn't really care for other people's um, methods. But I have this paper here kind of like a file folder paper thickness. Um, it came from something I got from the thrift store. Um, and so I turned this into this. It was a lot of fun. So as you can see, I did several things out of it. I love this picture. That tree is just so beautiful. And on to the fifth signature. This ledger page is so full of handwriting. I just love it. I love seeing vintage handwriting. So I like to include that in my journals. Um, here I circled the word botany on this vintage dictionary page. Here we've just got this little page that was green and went with the nature theme, but it's just um, another meeting, so you can just fill that out if it's for a meeting. Just lots of beautiful pages. I didn't want to put something on every page because like I said, this was meant for a writer.
Here's more of that amazing paper from 1955. Nice vintage page. You can has lots of space for writing on. Did a little washi tape strip here, and then this little mini um, clip. What's it called? Um, it's holding this vintage envelope, and I did another wax seal here with a little acorn. And again, it's not attached. And this is just full of lots of little vintage items that you can go through. Lots of fun little things that you can use in your journaling to play around with. So, meet Gary. Gary Hope from 51, Junior Picture. He doesn't look too happy about having his picture taken. I don't know what that's getting hung up on. Oh. What is that? Oh, okay. That's a vintage playing card. All right. And here we've got a little envelope with a little butterfly charm on it. And I've got this little, this is not vintage and this is not vintage, just stuff from my stash. And in here we've got some little stickers that you can play around with of stamps. Another vintage playing card, Glider Gracie, a little tiny vintage notepad page or something. And, um... Just another one of these with the flowers. I'll put those back later. Another little sticker. Mushroom sticker here. Love these little mushroom stickers. They're my favorite. Vintage paper from 1955 with handwriting. And here's the end. I did, I took my leftover scraps from the project and turned them into a little notepad with some of that um, file folder like material and that's it I hope you guys enjoyed that um, let me know if anyone else out there does like these big tassels and if my tassel is way too much for people I'd like to know because I'd like to know in the future if anybody actually is interested in something so big or is it just me so thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.